I have to say, uh, I've never heard that song before. Anyone else heard that song before? I think that's the best opening song we've ever had at this wonderful event here in the Poly. Thank you so much, Miles, for opening with that. Just some housekeeping, so to speak. I mentioned this before we began. Um, to mention it again leaves it a little bit late, but if you do need to use a toilet, it's a bit of a trek away, but we do have one. As you head towards the gate, you'll see fencing on your right-hand side. You need to go in behind that fence. There's a little cabin there, and there's a toilet in it. Um, give yourself time. Um, as, you, as you do leave later, uh, there are many buildings here, and it's the natural thing to be drawn to take a look in. Uh, I would have to ask you on behalf of the organizers, please don't, because there are different purposes on the buildings today, and there are service users and indeed vulnerable service users inside those windows, in, inside those walls. So please don't. Uh, it would be uh, appreciated if you didn't uh, look in the window, particularly if you didn't attempt to take photographs. And also speaking of photographs, there is, as you may have seen, a film crew here. A documentary is being made. Uh, and uh, anyone who doesn't want to be on film, just stay out of the way of the, of the camera and they'll take care of the rest. <laughs> I mentioned that 10 years ago there was a discussion, should we do something? Um, and one of the first people to put her hand up and say, I'll help with that, I'll be part of that, is a woman with her own story to tell uh, regarding uh, Besborough and what happened to her own, her own brother. And uh, every year she gives out to me for, for saying that it wouldn't happen without her, but it wouldn't. It's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen, Carmel Cantwell. to welcome everyone here to our 10th annual Besborough commemoration, including the public representatives present here today, whose support is greatly appreciated. A special thanks to our guest speakers, the Special Advocate for Survivors, Patricia Carey, the outgoing Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira McCarthy, and uh, our MC, PJ Coogan, who's had his support from the beginning. My gratitude also to my colleagues, Christy Kerwin, Martin Parfrey, for your support and hard work, and to Daniel Loftus, who typed up all the names of the lists of deaths, which you can see on the side of the folly here, and who is working tirelessly with his volunteers to find the missing names of those that died. Finally, our sincere thanks to the renowned musician and singer, Miles Gaffney, who, who's performing here today, as you can see. Uh, Besborough is a very special place to us, especially here around the folly, which has become the de facto memorial headstone to all the mothers and children that died, and even more so as the burial place of 859 babies is still unknown. This is a place where we come together and remember all those that were born here that died and those who were separated from their mothers. 923 Besper children and 31 women are entered into the death register. If they were given proper medical care, we believe many could have been saved. It was only when the Chief Medical Officer James Deeney intervened in 1945 that the death rate came down in subsequent years. Prior to his intervention, death rate was horrendous. In 1943, three out of four Bez uh, babies died in Besborough. My brother was born in Besborough in 1960, and three days after his birth, he became seriously ill with an infection that could have been treated with antibiotics. However, despite my mother begging the nuns to have her baby seen and treated by a doctor, her pleas were ignored for two weeks, until such time as William became so ill, he was finally transferred to St. Finbar's Hospital, but the medical intervention there came far too late and he died. My, the Mother and Baby Home Commissioner of Investigation reports, describes William as an unclaimed baby, but my mother, who is present here today, did everything she could to try to get help for her baby to no avail. She had no say when she was in Besborough and she was not even informed initially when William died or where he was buried. She was just cold, coldly told that her baby was dead and already buried with no further details forthcoming from the nuns. My mother returned to Besborough in 94 looking for information on where William was buried and the nuns she met showed her the spot in the nuns graveyard here and the nuns said William was buried there. This was another blatant lie as documentary proof obtained by the Mother and Baby Home Commission of Investigation confirmed in 2019 that he was actually buried in Cars Hill Cemetery and not Besborough. 
but the exact location of his grave in Cars Hill could not be determined. The, the documentary evidence of William's burial place uh, was already in the possession of the nuns when my mum came to Besborough in 94 to beg them to let her know where her child was buried so that she could visit his grave, but they still insisted that William was buried in Besborough, which they knew was not true. How could they be so cruel and disrespectful? The fact is that the majority of babies that died in Besborough did not get a dignified burial with their mothers present. It is thought that hundreds of children may be buried on the grounds here, but another year has gone without any decision made by onboard Panola regarding two separate planning applications for housing developments on the land around us. This land should never have been sold to the nuns to, develop, to developers and instead should have been given back to the community and preserved in the memory of nearly 19,000 women and children that came through this horrendous institution where so many perfectly able mothers were separated from their children for life against their will. In particular, I would like to remember two mothers, Julia and Annie, that spent their whole adult lives here. Julia was from McCroom, who worked as a domestic servant at age 20 in 1922. She gave birth to her daughter in Cork County home. Later that year, she was transferred to the newly acquired Sacred Heart home here at Besborough and Julia's daughter was five years old when she was boarded out to a family and then adopted age 12. Julia herself remained in Besborough for 62 years and she died in 1984. Annie was a 21 year old from East Cork and also a domestic servant. She gave birth to her son John in the Yorley Union workhouse and transferred via the county home to Besborough in January 1925. Baby John died 13 days later. Cause of death was general debility. Annie also never left Besborough and remained here for 60 years. She died in Besborough in 1985. You will find details of those that died on the boards at the side of the folly. Of the 923 children that died, the burial place of only 64 is on record. And even then in many cases, the actual location of the graves in the cemetery is unknown. The burial place of 859 children is unknown and we have been campaigning for years for the grounds of Besborough to be thoroughly examined so that we can determine the truth. Whilst the government have provided funding for other institutions like Tume and Sean Ross Abbey to be forensically examined, the whereabouts of the remains of the missing Besborough babies has been left to the theories and speculation of others. This is not good enough. Our belief is that everything that can be done should be done to get justice for the missing babies and mothers and their families and after all the investigations have been concluded irrespective of whether we find a mass burial site uh, or not the grounds at Besborough should be preserved in their memory and for the surviving family members and the community in general we want the children to have their narrative told and to give those that died the dignity that they deserve but were denied to that end we wish to to be included in all discussions held by local authority and ministers in government about plans for Besborough and, and to be involved in sincere discussions about how we can best honour them today. Thank you.